All right. This is Conscious of Crazy Podcast, man. In the sense of knowing what's right and what's wrong versus a mentally unsound mind. This is a conscious said, man, for the hip hop heads only, man. Talking about hip hop, man. Strictly, man. Strictly hip hop. Yeah, shoot, man. Um, on that, y'all can introduce yourself to the people, man. D night, you already know, man. You know, so you a member of Conscious of Crazy. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You already know, you go way back, man, 10th grade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh um going ahead. Hey, right, I'm uh, I'm Danny. Uh also go by K2. I do music. I did a couple songs with B Night and uh and with Jess. Yeah. Blue. Hey, I'm the only one on here not a rapper, man. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a writer, man. I can I could ghostwrite somebody for somebody. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Um, shoot, I'm Jess, Jesse, J. Williams, you know, whatever you want to call me. I made a few songs with Danny and D-Night. A lot of songs with Danny, actually. He don't be trying to release them, no, but we ain't going to talk about that. But, um, but yeah, shoot, that's pretty much it. I made music. I write cold. So, you know, strange combination there, but that's pretty much what I do. Mm, salute, man. And, of course, D-Night, man. Springfield is... Springfield's very own, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Going to yeah. reintroduce yourself for the people, too. All right, so, you know, this is your boy, B-Night. This is, like, what, my, my 30th time being on the podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the only times I've been on here, but, yeah. you know, hip-hop artist slash songwriter, college graduate. That's why. I am. Yeah, man, shoot. Um, to start with uh, the off-season, man, is that where we're going? We're doing. <laughs> hey, man. The J. Cole. Oh, uh, uh, man, I love the shit, man. <laughs> so, I'll be whole honest with you. Uh, I loved it, man. I had no problem okay. with it. Yeah, All right, man. Let's, let's start. Let's start by uh, let's start by doing uh, everybody's ratings at album. You know what I'm saying? Mm. First listen, uh I gave it a, like eight, eight point five. Just off okay. the road. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah, I give it an eight. Mm. Okay. I'm feeling like when I first heard it, I was feeling like a nine. After like a week, I'm giving it like an eight and a half. Mm. Yeah, first li- first listen, I gave it an eight and a half. I'm gonna keep it around an eight and a half. I mean, he surprised me with those features. Oh yeah, I seen a post. Uh, <laughs> John Wall, he was uh, interviewing um, Bradley Bill. He was like, man, you, this ain't like you. <laughs> He's like, this ain't like you. Or something. Like, it was like, it was had J Cole with the features. Like, this ain't this ain't nothing like you, man. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I was tripping because he had did an interview and he said he was doing no more features at all. And I'm thinking like, bro, don't you got dudes on your label? Like they can't work with you either. Right. And then exactly. and then he dropped the album. Somebody said it had features on it. I said, that ain't got no features on it. Yeah. Let me go listen to this. And it had, I'm like, oh, it do got features on it. Yeah. Like the first track list, like I just I got the track list where like it like it had no like it just had um, just the, the song titles. I didn't see it like with, yeah. and then the features came in. It's like, damn, all right, boss is on every damn <laughs> song. <laughs> like, salute the boss. He was one like one of my favorites in Dreamville too. Like, he's a sleeper. But uh, yeah. So uh, you said it was like a, you said it was like a nine. When, when, when I when I first heard it, I felt like it was a nine, and it probably can get there over time. But I feel like since he was rapping so crazy, oh. and no disrespect to boss, I I would have loved to hear. Um, you know, somebody that can actually like, don't get me wrong, little baby can rap, you know what I'm saying? But I would have loved to hear somebody on that top tier, you know, rapping alongside of him. You know, I ain't never heard him rap like that. And I would have loved to compare it to somebody, you know, that can actually, I would have loved to hear Jid on there, maybe a Kendrick, you know, somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I agree, man. I feel like him and Kendrick, I think that, I think that's kind of just to, just to talk about that a little bit. I think, I think that's how they should end their career. Just do that, you know, collab album. You know, I think that's how they should end their career for real. Just do a collab album. Are we gonna want to hear it then? You know, I mean, I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't care about it. Anymore. <laughs> we don't care. No all right, more. I feel like all right now. I mean, I'm kind of in the same vein as what D Knight is saying, but I yeah. think if all right, let's say for instance, two months from now, no, no announcement, nothing, they just drop it. Boom. I think I think that would be perfect timing, honestly, for both of them. Oh yeah. But it's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. I mean, nah, because hey, um, hey. but then again, Carter Five came out, so anything is possible. Hey, how many of y'all um y'all check that like the TDE load up posts 
did y'all think that it was gonna be uh Kendrick? No, nah, I, I knew it was gonna be Kendrick. I knew it was gonna be Kendrick. I think from a business standpoint, it would have been horrible for them to lead out with Kendrick. I feel like if anything, they're gonna be like building up to Kendrick, you know what I mean? Probably like September ish. That's what I that's what I feel. Yeah. Yeah, Kendrick, he always uh he's been good for dropping in the fall or something like that. Cause yeah, I feel like it's getting it's probably getting late yeah. in the game to drop. Yeah. Nah, yeah, nah, he needs to. How you let how you let J. Cole, Jermaine Cole, <laughs> drop two drop two projects since the last time you dropped one. Hey, do we count? I mean, how 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 much love are we giving to uh, the Black Panther album? <laughs> It's just, it's that don't right. count. That's a whole movie album. I know. I, I, that, I know, but I appreciate like, it, motherfucker. <laughs> like, for me, for me, that Black Panther album was like Kendrick doing like a DJ Khaled kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? He would he executive yeah. produced it. I don't really count it. I mean, I don't really count it towards the discography, like his core discography. It's like one of them, you know, side projects or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's like that Revenge of the Dreamer stuff. Thanks. Yeah, man, Cole, man, he snapped on Revenge of the Dreamers too. Like tie that in, like he been snapping yeah. for a while. <laughs> Cole, man. Well, when you when you was like, you know, when he had that little session, he was inviting everybody to that uh that little camp they had or whatever. I mean, you got to, you know, if you were the level like J Cole, you got to you got to come with your A game. And I feel yeah. like if it wasn't for that particular project, I don't think we would got off season. Honestly, that's my opinion. Mm, facts. I feel like yeah, I feel like he got hungry again. All right. He's been yeah. holding it for a while. Yeah. All right. So let's 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 see. Let's see. Um who do you think anybody out there did Jay Cole on the album? So I think anybody outdid him? Yes. Uh I think Lil Baby might have gotten him on Pride as the Devil. I think he let him get him. I think I think we gotta be honest. I feel like some sometimes some rappers on features, they just give you an alley hoop and like they just lay it, they just lay out the foundation like nigga kill it like this is this is yours <laughs> like just like LeBron James passed the torch to Dwayne Wade like hey this is yours I mean Dwayne Wade passed the torch to LeBron like this is yours this is your team now I feel like that's what he did and Lil Baby got it man he giving me Drake vibes <laughs> say man he give me you give me young Drake vibes man <laughs> before Drake took took over <laughs> it's like yeah okay yeah he got what it about, man. Uh... What about 21? Y'all not feeling that 21? 20, 21 a, did a, a solid verse. Perfect, yeah. solid. perfect verse. Perfect verse. Perfect verse. It wasn't better than Cole's, though, but it Bro, was he said, uh, okay. yeah. he said, he said, Teddy Bear to the mother. Like, that shit was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> he said one of the stupidest lines that I've heard in the last year. He said, nah, and I, I talked, I talked to, I had to be not about this in the chat. It was, uh, he said, I see chicken, you niggas is breasting me. I'm like, what the hell? What the what? Hell is and, then, and then I disrespect niggas respectfully. <laughs> like, I, like I, damn, I that, that's deep. <laughs> it's just like, no, uh, I, I, I mess with his verse, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, shoot the first record, man. What y'all felt about 95 South? Because he slapped me in the mouth. Like, oh, fuck, kill a cam? What the? No, <laughs> kill no, a cam? No, no, no. Oh, my that, was, that, was cold. that was a yeah. surprise. That was a big surprise. Oh yeah, uh, I think I would have loved to hear Killer Cam though. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. like, yeah, you know, I would have. All right, I feel like it'd have been dope if he would have did something like, you know, he start with Killer Cam and with like a Killer Cam verse on the outro or like a Styles P something like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that would I mean, be cool. He got the whole vibe. He got the whole vibe. New York thing. You know what I'm saying? So I would have loved to hear one of somebody from Dipset, somebody that can speak. You know, just going back to that, I would have loved to hear somebody. Right. That can really spit on J. Cole's level. Like, I feel like Lil Baby. Yeah. Lil Baby uh, is, is talented. But, I, you know, J. Cole is that, you know, he and that that upper tier, you know, rappers. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like he should have. I feel like I feel like he actually should have gave Jid a chance. Like, he had Boz and Moray on there. I'm like, bro, get Jid. I'm like, put Jid out there. That, that, or that's what I think he should have put on the album. Like, one of the youngest on his label. Definitely with it. I think I think he should have put Jid on there on one of them songs with Boss. Yeah, man. Shit, Jid. Yeah, Jid. I think him and Cole got crazy features on uh on his project. What other features y'all think Jid got? Probably. Uh, uh, I don't hear Jid. I don't on know. Say it again. You said what? I don't, I don't be hearing Jid on a lot of features. Mm-hmm. I don't. Nah. Yeah, he he did, a, I, he did some he did a feature with a uh, reason. It was pretty dope. Uh, 
Extinction. That was fire off. Of Dang. I, I think a lot of about are reason. afraid. I think a lot of people are afraid to rap with Jeezy. I'm gonna be honest. Oh shit, yeah. I'll be wow, too. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I could agree with that. He mm. say everything. <laughs> he's a fucking problem, bro. He a problem. Yeah, he like he, uh, he, he can, like he, he like court A. He can sing, you know what I'm saying? He, he like he like he like he like court A with Kendrick rapping. He like court A with like uh, um baby Kendrick's rapping ability. Oh uh, yeah, like a young, like a young, a young little Wayne, and then he just got so many other aspects to his his skills. It's crazy, man. Like, yeah, he's definitely dope. But yeah, sure. But what's y'all? Let what's me y'all ask y'all this. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all think that? All right, so the top tier rappers, you know, the J. Coles, the Kendricks, you know, all them people. What would you put J at? You know what I'm saying? As compared to them people. If we talk it, if we talk it lyrically, he has to be. I would say I would like I want to put him top tier, but he doesn't have enough like projects behind him for me to like say that. You know, okay. Yeah. I would like, say I would say like it, though he's definitely up there though. For yeah. Sure. So I'll probably say like in rapping ability, if he was like I don't know, if I put this like in, like in sports standards with the NBA, I wouldn't say he like a KD, LeBron, or nobody like he can he can compete with them, but he probably more like a like right now like a Jamal Murray in the playoffs. Mm. I respect that. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to think of somebody I, else to compare him to. Maybe just you know. You know, Grizzlies, you know, you know, point guard for the Grizzlies, man. Oh, man, I feel bad for Steph Curry, man. Ooh, I knew, I knew, I know, I know, I know the Warriors already behind that. They was three, they was three points away from being the seven seed and <laughs> niggas ain't made the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah, we, we, de- oh, we well. definitely, oh, well, Lakers there, though, so it don't matter. We definitely got to talk about some sports too, man. But shoot, what's your favorite line on the album, man? Because M on your head, okay. you Mario yeah. brother now was fucking crazy. <laughs> and Gazette time, man. Like, you, oh, you know, put an M on your head, you can wish the button. Dang, that was yeah. You know, when he first said M on your head, instinctively, just like watching a lot of, you know, watching Dragon Ball Z, I'm yeah. thinking he was about to say some Majin Buu shit. And I'm like, this shit hard, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. But like, he caught me off guard with the Luigi brother. Like, that's, that shit was still, that shit was still dope. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I didn't know. I didn't know it. No, this is the hardest line on the album. When he said, when he said, um, somebody, Michael B. Jordan, gonna call your girl or something, but my, uh, but, but my girl never pick up. Sorry, I can't say the same for you niggas. I was like, dang. <laughs> Hey, okay. I'm, hey, I'm gonna be whole honest. She gonna she gonna text him. Hey, he's here. <laughs> and then hang up. She gonna text back. Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> she gonna hit him back. <laughs> That's a lie. No, okay. But, all right. I won't say like the hardest line, but like, the line that stuck with me the most, especially like what J. Cole is and his career, was when he said the song "Let Go My Hand." When he was saying, uh, he was talking to his son, and his son told him to let go of his hand. It's like he was realizing, you know. Uh, you know, his son's gonna be his own man pretty pretty soon. You know what I'm saying? So I think like through all the, the rapping and everything, I feel like that was like the line that like hit me the most. I'm like, all right, because like you never really hear like Drake. You you see Drake's son all the time now. You you ain't never seen J Cole's son. You ain't never seen Kendrick's daughter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, it just it just reminded me that a lot of times when we don't see Cole, you know what I'm saying? You be like, oh man, when you gonna drop the project? Or King, when you gonna drop the project? You, you thinking about it like. Damn, these people got they, they started families, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So they got parents out here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Um a crazy one too. Like uh he died over the cross, you know, like the start of Christianity. Like, damn, like that was, yeah. that was hard. <laughs> the pocket that was he was hard. in was crazy. The pocket he was in was crazy. Like it. Yeah. yeah, and the whole like that line where he said, uh uh woke up seeing the demons hand on me, and then he said, I still sport the scar on my arm for where he branded me. That shit was hard. Yeah. That shit was hard. That whole that whole flow, that whole like round scheme was just dope. Exactly, man. Like yeah. to, to any others, because man, that Diddy story was crazy. Him fighting Diddy was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised a lot of people who don't remember hearing about that happening. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even know it existed until I looked it up when I, I heard the album. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about that uh, back in 2013. Yeah. Okay, so uh, somebody, I think it was either Punch or Top or somebody said that the way that the media said it happened is not how it happened. So in, in case, you know, for, I don't know if Jess heard about it, but, you know, how the story goes, 
apparently when, when Kendrick dropped control when he was saying I'm the king of New York or whatever, I guess it was at a party or something, Diddy was drunk and yeah. he felt some type of way about that King of New York line. You know, he was, you know, getting in Kendrick's face or whatever, you know. Uh, and I guess he poured a try to pour a drink on him or something like that. And and J. Cole like stood it, stood up for him or something like that. And I guess that's how it started. Or that's that's how I know it. Yeah. I don't know if there's any valid, you know, validity to that. Hmm. Yeah, he was pissed, bro. <laughs> it's like Kendrick, man. He he had everybody hot, bro. I, like <laughs> I kind of understand because Diddy, like New York, is like it's kind of personal to him. So yeah, like, but yeah, Diddy ain't like, never held a crown for King of New York, though. So I don't... exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, not, I know not he felt like <laughs> exactly. I feel like I feel like he thought I felt like I feel like of course like Biggie would be the only person I feel like he would consider the King of New York. I think that's probably why he took disrespect. For I that. can see. It. Obviously, yeah, well, I mean, no, it's a bunch of people. Yeah, y'all forget it, the list goes on. Yeah, the list. It's a long ass list for New York. Nah, man. they gonna get the New York list. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody from New York, pork man, shit, <laughs> pop. You like yo, he let that too. Like shit. Ooh, so, so you got Biggie, you got Jay Z. So back then you had Red Man, Met the Man, bro. <laughs> Or Def Def Jam Def Jam could have could have truly been like a lot more than what it was. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Sure, yeah. I love Close. Like I guess we could dive into like favorite records too. Like Close is like the craziest. It was a dope ass story he told. Like yeah, Coley always give you the craziest stories. Like yeah, definitely. Uh, what what some of y'all other favorite records? Because I feel like uh, my life. Um, I love applying pressure, man. I can't fucking lie. And then at the end of it, you know, I had to put up an Instagram uh, Instagram reel of that, man. I had to do the end of it. Like, niggas don't know how, you know, niggas act like you can't do something, so you got to do it in the nigga's face <laughs> so they know that you can do it. <laughs> nigga, just <laughs> a fraud-ass <laughs> nigga, expose them. <laughs> that shit yeah, was real. You know, when you, and when you think about it, you know, let's say, well, okay, well, I, I took from that, that, little, uh, that little clip is uh, an artist like Wayne, you know what I mean? Wayne been rapping so long that a lot of times when he put out a bunch of subpar verses, people forget that he can rap the way he can rap. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just like J. Cole or Drake, you know, people people that have done it so good that they, you know, they don't have to do their A game every single time. And it's like, sometimes you just got to, you know, show people, like, what you can do, you know what I mean? And I feel like I was waiting for J. Cole, you know, to really rap. And I feel, I feel like, I feel like since he dropped this, the offseason, like, it just it really has got to be a layup to the the uh, the fall off, you know what I mean? When he comes yeah. to fall off, it has to be harder than this, otherwise it's a failure, in my opinion. Oh yeah, definitely, I agree. Oh, it gotta be, or 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 he gonna fall off. Literally. Oh yeah, I think it's a it's an album before the fall off. I think it's a, he said it's a boy or something. So I, I don't know what he's gonna do with that, but yeah, he I definitely like... gave me mixtape vibes that he brought it into this album because Hungry J Cole raps at the best. You know, when J Cole hungry, he raps at the best. I feel like it's a boy. I don't think I think it's a boy's a project. I don't think it's his project. I don't think that's I, a project. I didn't think it was a project. He he confirmed that it's a project just like a week ago. But I think that, in my opinion, I think it's like Fox's project. That's my uh, that's my, my skepticism. Yeah, you know you could be right because I feel like the fall off. You know it makes sense. You know, yeah, it could be somebody else's project. I see it. Um, some of my favorites, obviously, uh, you know, I, Pride of the Devil, uh, My Life. Um, but like, aside from those, I feel like that's gonna be a lot of people's favorites. I feel yeah. like Ninety Five South for sure. Um, uh, I feel like Apply, Applying Pressure was definitely mine. And then uh, I was just talking about the song just a second ago. Um, Punching the Clock, Punching the Clock. Those are probably Love my three favorites. Yeah. Yeah. What about um anybody else's? It's still mine's. Yeah, it kind of similar to everybody. 95 South, Pride is the Devil. That song with 21, but mine is kind of like Moray's part. Like, I like Moray's part, but it, I don't know. When I first heard it, it gave me like Great Value John Legend vibes. Mm, yeah. Instead of sound, instead of sound like, instead of sound like it was Moray, it sounded like you got a Great Value John Legend on. I don't know. Hold on, who said he can't sing? Who said it didn't like his his vibes? No, he can sing. He can sing, but it's he can sing. 
Yeah, because I, just, I, I, still I still feel like the, the vocals. Okay, yeah, I still feel like the vocals was the strongest part. Oh yeah, I think he he he's definitely dope. He's definitely dope. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree for sure. Uh, what y'all feel about a hundred mil with Boss? Oh, I feel like I feel hard. like Boss could have scored could have got a verse. I feel like Boss could have got a verse. He should have had a verse. I, I feel like it was weird that because correct me if I'm wrong. I heard the album a couple times. I don't think Boss actually had a physical verse there. Nah, mm-hmm. not for real. Nah, I think he's just saying. So I feel like even <laughs> I was just talking to Jess about this last weekend. Um, like <laughs> for some reason he finally did features. You know what I'm saying? And he, he I guess, he featured a Dreamville artist. But it's like, is he ever gonna feature a Dreamville artist on his album? Like. <laughs> You know what I mean? Where is he like, no, I'm not doing it. I don't care. Y'all not about to show that y'all can rap too. It's me. I, you think it's he's scared of J.I.D.? He probably doesn't feel the need to. I mean, that's kind of what Revenge of the Dreamers is for anyway, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's like 30 yeah, kind, of, kind of like that We Are Young Money. Yep. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I know. I feel, like, I feel like what he going to do is hop on everybody else's album when they top him this year. And just drop like some cold verse on Jizz project, Boxes product project. Who else on Dreamville? Art Linux since she dropped a project this year. No, it's I'm pretty much gonna be a, a TD versus a Dreamville summer. <laughs> yeah, where, where y'all? I guess where y'all rank this album, or is it unrankable? And people, I think people are saying it's a cla- you know, instant classic. I, mean, I don't. Y'all feel I, I don't think. No, I don't the, think that could be an instant album, classic. I the last you. album I, I felt like was an instant classic, and it wasn't even an instant classic. It's because I heard it late. Probably I probably heard it like a month after it dropped, and that was maybe Butterfly. Like the first time I heard that, that's what I felt like it, that was a classic. First time I heard it, but I feel like um, I really haven't got that that feeling from a lot of albums within the last uh, three to four years. Honestly, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I seen like a meme. It had. Pretty much had uh, this album, and then pretty much he thrown in a uh, Good Kid, Mad City, like pushing no. Good Kid, Mad City. You know, nah, <laughs> not a good comparison. No, not nah, a good, nah, nah, it's not. I feel like I, this. I, I was compare. I was compare. No, yeah, I would compare it to Good Kid, Mad City. Nah, yeah, also, I think this. If anything, to compare it, maybe Damn would be a good, a better comparison. I, right? I think that's the best comparison out of Kendrick's yeah. album. Yeah, I feel like okay, I would I would see that, but at the same time, it's like damn did have a storyline. Like this is this is a really dope album as far as rapping, and yeah. it has some really good songs. But I feel like damn was a more better put together album. Like I yeah. feel like you know, like how you said this is like a mixtape, you know? Yeah, somebody like somebody like a you know a Uzi or somebody would drop an album where it's a bunch of good songs. You know what I'm saying? Or or a, a Twenty One with a bunch of good songs like a. a a little baby, you know, these are a bunch of good songs, but you know, like I feel like this is probably more in that lane where it's like it's a bunch of good songs, but it's not like a, a particular thread through the album. Yeah. What about like what, what about KOD? Album? KOD versus Dan. That's a bad that's not a bad comparison either, especially that, that's a better comparison. Yeah, and I feel like I'm bigger on KOD than a lot of people are. Oh, yeah. No, I like KOD because that whole storyline through it. Yeah. I love yeah, yeah, um, it. And then with his alter ego, like like bad J. Cole. Yeah, kill Edward. Yeah. King yeah. Edward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Um, like I, I I've been saying this and screaming it yet. He haven't dropped a bad album yet, you know. And I don't obviously he ain't going to. Like, like yeah, I, I don't I, feel I, like he drops any bad projects. I feel like his style is is uh it's this style either you in your four you're for it or you just it's not for you you know what i mean no yeah it's kind of like jay-z Cole likes to j cole like likes logic. To play too like like he doesn't take a lot of risk create creatively that's something else i've noticed over the course of his career oh, and, and, I, I, and uh, no. I, was, I was gonna say i can't now KLD really wasn't it wasn't really that much of a risk honestly that was kind of something that that he had to do because like for your eyes so for your eyes only was such a somber album like his next album had to had to you know pretty much be on some upbeat shit, especially you know the the type of times that you know he, he had uh 
chose to release it in too. Oh, yeah. So I feel like For Your Eyes only was, if anything, was probably his most risky album. Yeah. And I feel like over time, I think people might appreciate it more, but like I can yeah. see why people yeah. don't enjoy it as much as other projects. Yeah, yeah. isn't yeah. that when he started that No Features trend? No, I, don't, I think uh, 2014. It. 2014 didn't have no features. Yeah. But, but hell, he ain't had nobody rap on Born Center either. It was just him rapping. Yeah. Uh, that's true. Uh, Well, Boss, he had a verse. Boss had a verse. 50 Cent. Yeah, 50 <laughs> Cent. New York Times. Uh, Come on, you're right. right. That's the bonus, dude. Nah, that, that, damn. <laughs> that's the bonus. Crap. I tried, man. Yeah, Kendrick, he was just talking. Yeah, you're right. Damn. <laughs> he, yeah, he's selfish, man. He's selfish on his album. And I, yeah, I respect him. But as far as like um, first listen, this is my as far as all the albums combined, or when I first heard them, this is probably like my first, my favorite one on first listen. You know what I mean? But like, it's not my favorite album by him. It's just my favorite one when I first heard it. You know what I mean? Um, I will put it just as far as my favorite that might grow on me even more on time. Um, I think that I will put it as far as my favorite third. And I won't, I'm going to say, for me personally, I, I really like KLD. I mean, I'm not a, a lot of people don't agree with me. I like KLD as my favorite. Um, my second yeah, favorite is 2014. Second favorite. And yeah, then yeah. I'm put, yeah. Yeah, KLD might be four. Um, I got I got Born Center second. So, actually, so, yeah, it's, it's four Hill first, Born Center second. Um, KLD is definitely – yeah, I can give it fourth, and I can, I could squeeze this album. Uh, nah, KLD three. This album probably four, and then um, you know, four eyes only. It's got to probably be five. I'm think I'm forgetting. It. And then his last, his first album, you know, last right now. I love his first album, but yeah, yeah, yeah. His first album is pretty much going to be last by default. Honestly, he just he just progressed so much. Yeah. But for, for me, um, I I think. This is probably, you know, a top two favorite Cole album for me just because of how enjoyable it is, you yeah. know, like uh, like For Your Eyes Only is definitely grown on me a lot. When I first heard that one, I knew that it was going to be something that I wouldn't appreciate till later on, which is also how I felt when I first heard Skip a Butterfly. But uh, but yeah, I, I will I will put this album uh, number two in, in, in J. Cole's album catalog just due to, you know, how he you know, chose to like, you know, ditch being conceptual for an album and just like, just rap just for the sake of rapping, basically. So, uh, and, and that's, you know, yeah. that's what I think. Shoot, um, who else we need to drop this year? And uh, I guess next, uh, <laughs> I think we got like 10 minutes left, but uh, on it. We need, we need Drake to drop. Drake, yeah. Actually. No, he need to drop a project where he, where, he, where he rapping too. Oh, yeah. Drake, Drake has to, Drake has to uh, so, so people, I would love to hear Drake drop a rap album, period. Yeah, but I think Drake, very Drake, yeah, think. He, he's got to show people that he's still Drake. I, it's it's kind of shitty to say, but like, you know, but <laughs> I think the baby just passed him and Spotify listeners, people are like, oh, well, then it's the next wave or whatever. I'm like, do y'all not <laughs> remember who had, you know, who had views, what, so like, I don't know, like, a million, two million first week. Yeah. yeah. One dance yeah. had two billion streams, you know what I'm saying? A disc record nah, yeah. Grammy nominated, a disc record, like, <laughs> like yeah, nah. crazy. Yeah, I was just like, Drake need to get back on his rapping. I, I feel like right now is he has that stigma. He has that stigma just being somebody that just makes songs, just get views, and he has that stigma of or some I don't know why everybody thinks this, but they act like every every song that Drake ever drops is just some ghost written song that he just stole from some other artist. Yeah, I, I, and I gotta he, like, he just drop a song where he rapping like how he was when he was first coming up. So I feel a lot of people that learn about Drake now don't even really know about his his oldest song. They just go from nothing was the same on up to now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, that stigma about ghost writing is gonna always stick with him. But I, after listening to them reference tracks, like I don't, I don't think that he's. I personally don't think that he's ever had anybody ghostwrite for him. I feel like a melody. I, I could see like somebody writing a melody for him, but I, you know, he wasn't using the same words. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's for him. Um, 
shoot, what I guess what was a I guess what was an album that y'all felt so far that Drake was just snapping on? Like that was he was really rapping. What album? Uh was if, if you're reading this, he was snapping all through that album. Say Which again? one? On if you're reading this, it's too late. He he snapped all through that through that project. Yeah, nothing was uh nothing was the same as one of my favorites too. That too, yeah, that too. Hell, honestly, I, uh, I, I like both of them projects more than Take Care. You, you know, ooh, I'm just yeah. as far as rapping, as far as rapping, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. As I love Take Care for what it yeah. was. Exactly. I, I just, I just don't. I haven't revisited Take Care in so long. So like, but like, when, whenever I go back to a to a Drake album, I usually either play Nothing Was the Same or If You're Reading This Is Too Late. Them is like so probably favorite albums from Drake. Mm. About Take Care though. When I listen to it, it's like the album. The album is a very, it's like very, it's a dark album. You know what I mean? When you listen to it, it's like it's like a whole vibe. You know, the album cover I think perfectly suits it because when I'm listening to them songs, that's exactly how I'm imagining listening to them songs. You know, you know when Drake was just sitting at the table with the the Chavez and everything. You know, what I'm saying I feel like that was, I feel like none other none of his projects had created a vibe like Take Care. I feel like. Take Me Later was a raw project. Not as raw as So Far Gone, obviously, but the, the Take Me Later, I really enjoyed that project because I feel like he didn't really come into a style of own, but you can you can tell that he was, like, hungry. Take Care was more polished, and I feel like if you're reading this too late, in a lot of ways, it's similar to this, this J. Cole album that just dropped. It felt mm -hmm. like a mixtape where, you know, you know yeah. it was just, just a hard song. It was just hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, so um, we think you think we're getting bars from, you know, the certified lover boy because it don't feel like a. No, nah, nah, yeah, yeah. when I was <laughs> when I was listening to the Joe Budden podcast, he said he heard a couple songs and that Drake is talking that shit. That's, right. <laughs> that's what they said. Hey, hey did, did, little little baby little baby. did little uh, baby yeah. watch Drake? Did little baby watch Drake? He did. <laughs> and then why but, did he watch? Why did he watch Ross like that? <laughs> who, Ross who was I mean Ross was just talking on you know the last record like, and then he just go who watch Ross? He, he destroyed like Ross was just talking on that Drake record and then you know Drake was just rap. I don't I don't know if he told Ross the the layout for the song he just hey man just talk on this man it's like all right I got you Drake and it was no communication <laughs> it's like Ross did not say nothing you know to compare what Drake was saying, because Drake, he, you know, he was just rapping. Like, what the, it was, he didn't fit on the record, really. Ross has such a, a weird career where it's like, he's incredibly consistent. And I feel like he's gonna always go under the radar. Cause it, it's like, no matter who he on the song with, he keeping up with him, you know what I mean? He get on song mm -hmm. with Jay-Z, keeping up with him. He get on song with Wayne, keeping up with him. He get on song with Drake, you know what I'm saying? Kanye, there's nobody that, you know, Rick Ross has literally kept up with knots on, on the track. You know and I mean? it's, it's so crazy because like Ross, Ross isn't even crazy bar wise, bro. He just yeah. has a presence. No, bro. In the pocket, bro. Like yeah, he's lame, man. He, you know, his craft is crazy. <laughs> you know, Rick yeah. Ross is like one of the slickest rappers that has ever like rapped. Yeah, we talking about rappers. We gonna dive into it, man. Rap city, rap circles. Around Nikki, man, I'm tired of this. No, 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 no. You talking about you talking you talking about the same Nikki that had the best verse nine on Monster? She kept up with verse five nine and Black Thought, man. Well, not that, not that Nikki. That Nikki was hungry. Nikki, I want to say, I want to say, I think we underrated Nikki now because now all she talk about is all yes, um. I gotta listen to her albums. Do I have to? <laughs> I mean, no, you don't have to. But at the same time, if you don't listen to it, if you don't listen to it, no, I ain't listening. If you don't listen to it, then you can't critique it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to yeah. listen to the album, but you can't be like, oh, he can't, she can't rap if you don't listen nah. to the album. Man, yeah, I mean, y'all. Yeah, yeah, y'all niggas, niggas in the group chat was tripping off that. I, 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 I don't know, no, man. That was crazy. Yeah. But can she keep wow. it with Royce the Five Nine and Black Thought? She's not that type of rapper. Nikki, Nikki. Uh, I know. Uh, sorry, because Rap City you know, did. Wait. Rap you know, City she, did. She proved it. You know when she when, she, when she when she rapping when she rapping rapping definitely. 
Well, I feel like everybody looking at this new age Nikki, where she trying to, where she got this style that got to compete with, you know, Meg and Cardi B, which is basically just talking about their body you know and all that. Thank you. Thank people, you people we, Thank we just you, we just talked about we just talked about this a second ago about when you do something so good and then you and then you like go away from it. And sometimes you just gotta prove to people yeah. what you're capable of. Yeah, what you I feel like do. I feel like Nikki. And Nikki, Nikki gonna come back. They gonna come yeah. back with something hard, and then you are gonna be like, "All right, I was, yeah. talking, I was talking spicy. I, 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 I didn't mean that shit." Hey, Chung Lee <laughs> was crazy. I listen to Chung Lee. I like Chung Lee, but yeah, it's like I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's not. Uh, and then like the, the content. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it, it, it's a reason. It's a reason she had the she had a chokehold on the female rap game for like uh, eight had, years straight. Yeah, <laughs> but but that doesn't mean she's the lyric. She's the most lyrical female rapper. Oh, that, you know, but, in, no, in a way, it kind of do because <laughs> female the, rappers they kind of have to they kind of have to be some type of good. Like there will never be no garbage little punk female rapper that's gonna blow up on that right. scale. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm trying to think well, of look, the name. Even, even even as a male, even as a male, little punk fell off. You know what I mean? So I mean, I feel like as a female yeah. artist to survive, you have to be. And I feel like that that does speak to you know it speaks to her pop star. It speaks to her, but it speaks to her lyrics too. Because an uh, artist like like Nicki, you know what I'm saying, who who, who is commercial, you not you only gonna get so far from just being commercial. You know what I mean? What, what's yeah. what's that one chick that had that Gucci Gucci song or Iggy Azalea? You know what I'm saying? Damn, right <laughs> yeah, I forgot you know, Iggy. Iggy. <laughs> you know exactly. You know what I mean? You are gonna have that season, but you're not gonna stick around unless you're actually saying something. And I feel like without Nicki saying something, she wouldn't have been around for this long. Yeah, I, um, yeah, yeah. I forgot got, about her. We got like less than a minute. Did y'all want to come back and then finish it out like 10 more minutes or something? 20 or yeah. something like that. All right. Yeah. So let me uh let me save this. All right.